helping us here in America today, okay? So who wants to reclaim their health? It sounds like a worthy endeavor, right? Tonight we're going to talk clearly about an outline that's ver a very important process that will yield incredible benefits to you regarding regaining or reclaiming, or reclaiming your health. That's supposed to be a reality, right? Being healthy. We're supposed to walk in health and healing. We have the means and the ability to do so, don't we? We're going to give you the knowledge, and part of this knowledge will be to fully explain the inflammatory process and how that gets rooted in our bodies. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So if your body is not allowed to work properly, it can lead to a system breakdown and undesirable symptoms of disease. So are you ready to get healthy? Yes. yes. All right, so we get asked all the time, what is the inflammatory protocol and where did it come from? And so it was adopted from Dr. Simeon's HCG protocol. Anyone heard of HCG before? Okay, that was a different type of protocol. It was a reduction of calories. They used human chorionic gonadotrophin, which is a drug, to sort of stimulate the body to produce hormones to help you lose uh, body weight. It was very reduced calories. So it, this plan has been redefined. We do not contain HCG in the plan. It's going to actually modify your lifestyle for a permanent basis and also restore your health. So as Dr. Michelle said, if you're ready to regain your health, this is about where you want to start. 85% of our long-term outcome regarding our health is about nutrition. How many knew that? 85%. So everybody say 85%. 85%. Do we understand that that's a great majority? It is. So it's not about exercise. It's not about anything else. It's about what comes in the mouth. So it's not a one size fit all. We must understand that our uniqueness comes out and that's how you listen to your system. Listen to your system because it's telling you a story. We do use some homeopathic drops or as it's better said, nanomolecular nutrition, which we'll talk about a little bit more. We incorporate those. Sometimes we'll put in a little bit of supplementation to help with cravings. Anyone know anything about cravings? How about this concept of emotional eating? So we have to learn to bring about control of what's called the HPA axis, and we'll talk about that tonight. But HPA axis balance is, is more than just about the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the adrenal. It really includes the thyroids and the other sex hormone producing glands such as the gonads or the ovaries. And when our nutrition is really personalized and optimized, everything, everyone say everything, Everything, including our adrenals and our hormones, function better, okay? So the expected benefits, we see these benefits routinely, and this has resulted in several of the disease processes actually being reduced or reversed, such as high blood pressure, you know, type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes really shouldn't be, exist. When we start taking the sugars out, we see the system get better. We see less chronic inflammation. And inflammation, as you'll learn tonight, is the precursor to all chronic sickness and disease. And we will see immune system improve, immune system function. So that means less coughs, less colds, less flu. Lipid panels get better, cholesterol gets better, triglycerides get better. And as Dr. Mark said, we get control over that thing we call emotional eating or craving and craving addictive food. Those cravings tend to drive people to be things they didn't, people they didn't want to be and to do things they didn't want to do. So we dampen the desire and you will have the ability to overcome. Other benefits are repairing metabolism. It helps to repair your basal metabolism. Your body will begin to repair itself properly and your liver and kidney, those detoxification organs, their ability to detoxify will improve. So last but not least, you will get a positive body composition change. And this means getting rid of that inflammatory yellow fat and improving your lean mass. The excess fat will go away along with an increased desire to get to the gym and exercise, which will build and maintain lean mass and improve your basal metabolic rate. I think the next slide will tell a story. How many know what an inflammatory is? Has anybody had a nightmare? 
Did you just really enjoy yourself during the nightmare? Wasn't that wonderful? You woke up in a cold sweat and say, what is happening? Is this real or is this not real? Feels like it's real, but I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is real today. This is our body system's worst nightmare, and this is happening all over America today. Do we realize, understand that low-grade, chronic, systemic, elevated inflammation is a part of all, everyone say all, all, all disease processes. Some people say, well, it causes it. Don't know whether it causes it or is a symptom of, but it's a part of it. And if we can reduce this part of it, we can perhaps begin to reclaim our health. Now, please understand, the causes of many disease processes that we call are multifactorial. However, one thing that has to be corrected, and I would say, underline that word. Think about that word HAS being in all caps. We have to control our foundational nutritional habits. Without that, that 85% chance of us increasing our health will go away. Without correction, rampant, and I mean rampant inflammation will continue and disease processes will continue to intensify like a big fire. This inflammation will get worse. And our main point of our class tonight is really this, to give you a clear plan to correct our all our nutritional issues that are unnecessarily taxing our system and bringing about imbalance in our inflammatory processes, causing this thing called the inflammation and all the symptoms that result from that, all right? So the signs and symptoms of inflammation have been present since before Jesus walked the earth. In fact, in 30 to 40 AD, Cornelius Celsus said, uh, classified inflammation as four things. Number one, swelling, or what they call tumor. You know what swelling is. When you get an injury, things swell up. Also, they get red hot, and he coined that as something called rubor, red, or red hot. Heat, things heat up. The temperature goes up when they're inflamed or things are injured. They, he termed that calor and pain. When you have an acute injury or something is sick, there's oftentimes dolor or pain. Now the concept didn't go away. Cornelius, Cornelius Celsus passed it on to good old, good old Galen of Pergamum and 129. Friend of ours, Galen of Pergamum, he's a friend of ours. <laughs> Some of you going, what? <laughs> Humor is good medicine for the soul, remember AD, that. AD, after death. Yeah, true. <laughs> 199, after death, Galen of Pergamum, he added the loss of function. So when inflammation is around, you have those five things swelling, erythema or redness, heat, pain, and loss of function. So when our bodies start getting chronic inflammation, they kind of look like this, what the standard American lifestyle looks like. Heat and redness and swelling and pain and eventually loss of function. As we can see, our foundation is weakening and our systems are starting to break down. Look at this leg. We can clearly see all of the areas of the inflammatory response in that wound. You see redness, you see pain, you see loss of function, you see heat. That is the picture of inflammation in its totality and that is what can be happening inside your system because the precursor to all sickness chronic sickness and disease is inflammation all right so we wanted to give you some sort of molecular or cellular triggers i want you to catch these because this is a little bit high level but think about this from a common sense standpoint to trigger the inflammatory process you have to have some form of trauma right something has to happen whether it be mechanical chemical thermal whatever it is to trigger the trauma now we know when we have trauma there's going to be debris you're going to get destruction right does that make sense so when you get destruction that could also come from pathogenic microbes which is gut imbalance how many people today have gut imbalances because because of poor nutrition right so these pathogenic microbes can also cause a sort of trauma and then we have this wonderful thing called advanced glycation end products. Call them AGE, A-G-E, advanced glycation end products. This is when we get too much sugars in our system and proteins and other 
sort of compounds in our system get glycosylized and they get over sugared and they get they get damaged. This is how cholesterol particles in one form or fashion get smaller and get in our system and get damaged. Toxins, how many know there's toxins out there that we can see or can't see? Toxins are everywhere. We live in a toxic world, don't we? If we can't control all toxins, certainly we need to control the ones we know about. And what about free radicals? I mentioned oxidized lipids. Well, what about oxidized proteins? When our system becomes full of these oxidized particles, we have a problem. The inflammatory system elevates up. Now, is that necessarily a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's not really a bad thing because it's trying to defend us. So inflammation really has a twofold process. It's got a purpose, and I like things in our body that has a purpose. We must look at inflammation as not a negative thing, but a positive thing. It's going to make sense because inflammation, first of all, is about defense. Our country has a military, right? Without a military, without border security, without air security, we can't defend ourselves, can we? So our first defense system is really from like uh, what I would consider the CIA or the satellite intelligence we get, taking pictures from space. We see things happening. If something happens, obviously we're going to send in the military, but we can do surveillance. When something goes wrong, our inflammatory system is about repair. It sort of sequesters or, or cordons off the area. It sets the crime scene, so to speak. And then it begins to activate a healing response. Pretty cool protective response, don't you think? Our body is about protection, so let us not be scared or alarmed when the inflammatory process upregulates. It's trying to communicate a message to us, again, that our body's at war. Now what happens? I want you to kind of see the process. First of all, leukocyte. What is that? Well, these are your, your, your white blood cells that go to an area and they, they, they migrate there. If you have a sign, a sign of an injury or trauma, the body's going to send all of its manpower there to sort of surveil what's going on. How bad is it? Is it bad? Do I need more people? So everything begins to migrate that way. Rheology is when it gets sealed off. That's when you get the coagulation and it begins to seal off the area and like cordon it off because this is the scene of the crime. It'd be like a car wreck where they cordon it off and no one goes anywhere, right? They have to look at the crime scene, see how much help they need. Well, it gets better because when we have this incredible trauma that causes it to be cordoned off, we have to produce a lot of energy to get there. All of our resources go there, so we get this great oxidative burst. All of our energy is produced to go that way. It's kind of like a wartime, right? How many were around in World War II? Don't raise your hand, just kidding. Made you think about it for a moment though, didn't I? When all of our resources were being shuttled overseas, correct? What did the economy do over here? Did it go down? We didn't prosper here. We sent all our resources there. Same way as our body does. It sends all the resources to the site of injury to work on healing that injury and repairing the crime scene, so to speak. So this is where the cytokines and the chemokines come in. They kind of keep shuttling out there to make sure that all of our resources that we need are given. These are called inflammatory cytokines because they're trying to signal the body, do I need more, do I need less, where are we in this process? And finally, when it gets to the point where this acute phase reactant called CRP, which stands for C-reactive protein, gets elevated, which we see on blood tests, that means simply that our body is at war. Our body's at war. So seeing C-reactive protein elevated on a blood test is that necessarily a bad thing in itself? Not really. But it means that our body's at war. What we want to know is why. Because remember, our system is about protection and defense. So for a bit of biology, we want you to understand the inflammatory response and how it allows a release-like activation of this thing called nuclear factor kappa B. And this is like the hot button release to nuclear weapons these things that activate nuclear factor kappa B are things like infection. Pathogen-associated molecular patterns, they're starting to 
release nuclear factor kappa b and it goes back to the nucleus of the cell and it starts to make more of it. Any kind of tissue damage, damage associated molecular patterns, activate the cellular receptors leading to downstream inflammation. So you can see that inflammation begets inflammation because you've let go of your artillery system from the cellular level. It's not about at the site, it's signaling the DNA to make these response proteins in reaction to what's going on at, in, at the site. Oxidative stress like superoxide, hydrogen peroxide, or oxidized LDL, those radicals that are inside your body telling your body to make more nuclear uh, factor kappa B. Advanced glycation end products, those are sugars, A, G, E. High sugars end up in age, age glycosylated end products. It's one of the biggest war weapons that you can put on your system for activation of chronic systemic inflammation. And what about trans fats and hydrogenated oils and even to a degree excessive amounts of saturated fats? They're all in your system and your body is seeing them as a foreign invader and it's launching its missiles of attack. Synthetic toxins, the standard American diet, sugars, grains, breads, additives, preservatives, red dyes, yellow dyes, green dyes, all of the, the, the things that are in packaged foods are allowing this armamentarium to keep your system in a chronic state of inflammation, producing those cytokines that keep this vicious cycle going and we haven't stopped to take a look at what lifestyle is doing to wrecking our long-term health. So what in turn can cause this to be chronically upregulated? We've got to look at issues that cause our body to continually push the war button. Can we begin to see how this may tire our internal military? Eventually, chronic inflammation is coming from chronic overeating. That's a cellular signal that there's an attack and a war on the system. The body is saying, I've got too much sugar, I've got too much fat, I've got too much saturated oil on board, and I need help. I'm oxidizing in a rapid rate. I'm exposed to all these persistent organic pollutants. Please help me, I've got too much of an inflammatory environment here with visceral adiposity and its inflammatory nature on the body. Diabetes, type two diabetes is a self-inflicted disease and it leads to cardiovascular disease. And these things can be modulated if we know how to manage our lifestyle. LPS, that is a bacterial component of gut dysbiosis that can upregulate, get into the system, and signal your military to launch its missile weapons. So can you start to see how we can get in trouble with chronic upregulation of NF-kappa B from eating, overeating, chronic infection, which will eventually lead to things like autoimmune disease? We become depressed, lethargic, not moving, aging, fatigued, and eventually the system just set, goes on revolt. We sometimes think that only the things that happen to us now in our lifetime have an effect. But our past matters. How many know our past matters? Because sometimes we've discussed molecular triggers or cellular triggers, but what about the things we bring from the past? No one really talks about that. How about chronic fear? Can that be passed down through lines? Can that cause unnecessary inflammatory upregulation? Fear, worry? How about resentment or anger? Can that matter to us? Can that upregulate? How many get really happy when they get angry? <laughs> <laughs> that makes you think, doesn't it? Disappointment or shame? How many beat themselves up? You know, just loving beat yourself. Isn't that just the greatest thing in the world? I am so bad, I'm so rotten, I'm so sorry. And I'm having a wonderful time talking bad about myself. See, that's something that we don't think about. What about, for example, we carry genetically susceptible markers that quickly upregulate our inflammatory system. Some people have a wonderfully fast inflammatory hot button, which is actually pretty good because from an primal standpoint, we need to survive. 
Now, what about negligible, negligible behavior by our mothers before or during the birth process? Could that matter? Can we all see how these things called antecedents that precede us can contribute to our present and future? Can we all see that? Very important to catch that concept. So our biggest concern, or one of our biggest questions, is what causes the transition to a local inflammation or something that might start in the gut and eventually becomes this chronic systemic inflammatory response called chronic disease. I like the song, how many remember this? It's a heat wave burning in my heart. Unfortunately, there's a big heat wave roaming across America and it's not really, um, you know, sunshine or hot temperatures. I know we get that sometimes <laughs> in our home state, but it's really our body crying out for help. Our bodies are chronically crying out for help and we need to start listening, giving it resources that are going to allow it to fight. If we ignore the resources or cut the resources off, I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be continually sick. And that's not where we need to go as a country. So let's talk about the acute versus the chronic inflammatory response. Acute in, uh, inflammation is the initial response of the body to harmful stimuli. And it's achieved by the increased movement of white blood cells. As we've talked about, white blood cells come in to the injured area and begin to uh, help the injured area. It causes heat, redness, swelling, loss of function, pain, itching. This acute inflammatory response is necessary. It's not a bad thing. It's a necessary component of healing and it's necessary for survival. It can be elevated at times, which is very normal. It can be escalated if we have a broken bone or we have a surgery and we're healing a wound. It's often a measure through a variety of, measured through a variety of markers like high sensitive C-reactive protein that we mentioned before. Now let's just go on a, analogy, a, sh a little short analogy of what acute inflammation looks like in your body. So we talk about stories a lot because stories stick with us. That's what we call them sticky stories. So we're telling you sticky stories tonight because I want you to remember this process. So I want you to imagine in your neighborhood you have a fire, a house fire. Who's getting the call to respond? What kind of department? The fire department's called to respond, and they're going to go out there with everything they have, every personnel they have, every equipment they have, every chemical, every bit of water they have. They're going to go to that scene, and they're going to just control that fire. They're going to tear it down. Now, when they go out there and do that, and they deal with the fire, after they finish the controlling the scene, they're going to come back to the firehouse. They're going to clean their equipment, right? Mm -hmm. So they can rest to go do it again. This is a great story about the way chronic or way acute inflammation is supposed to work. It's supposed to go out there, do its job, come back, rest, and be prepared to go to full battle again. Can we see that now that if we did not have acute inflammatory response, we would die from a cut on our finger? Something that small would kill us. So from acute to chronic inflammation, chronic inflammation is prolonged inflammation lasting weeks to months and years affecting your life. This is a progressive shift in the type of cells that are actually present in the site of inflammation. And it's characterized by the destruction of tissue from the inflammatory response. And all disease starts out small and begins to work big with these maladapted processes that are going on in your system and they can become uh, detrimental instead of beneficial if they're left to go on for a very long time. So they can be self-perpetuating and cause alterations in your cellular physiology and destruction of your tissue, which leads to chronic disease like heart disease, vascular disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, all these eases that we don't want to have that simply mean the system is in a state of dis-ease. When we talk about analogies for this one and the story, I want you to imagine the same scenario in the neighborhood. One house fire, the fire department responds. 
They begin to shoot every bit of water cannon they have on that thing, but when they're almost done, they get a call that, guess what? Three miles away, there's another fire. So what are they going to do? They're going to ask for help. They're going to ask for help from nearby fire departments. Everything they can do, get over there. They may send some of their crew over there. They may send one of their trucks over there if they have it. But while they're fighting that second fire, they get another call for a third fire. And they go fight that one. And they're divided. They're just doing the best they can with limited resources. But oh, by the way, they get a fourth call. And there's some grass fires because it's a high wind. And at, do they gonna, are they going to send their resources to fight the grass fire when the structures are burning down? They might. But if they had their priorities, they would send them to the structural fire where life is in imminent danger, right? Property is in imminent danger. So this is what happens to our bodies when we're under this idea of chronic systemic inflammation. Too much damage going on. Too many fires to fight. Not enough resources to handle the catastrophe that's being leveled upon our system. It's like having our system too attacked. We're getting overwhelmed. We fight, we fight, we fight. All of our resources are going that way. Guess what? Our energy levels are going to do. Are we going to feel like going to the gym? Of course not. All of our energy levels are going to fight the war. And just like our analogy from earlier, when we're talking about during a wartime, when all of our resources are being shuttled that way, our internal economy is going down. It's getting more poor. It doesn't have anywhere to go because all our resources have got to go away. Okay? So chronic systemic inflammation leads to something called metabolic syndrome. That's the addition of biomarkers that have gone bad in your system. And you might want to take a look at your own biomarkers and see if they live or exist inside you or with you in this thing we call the skin bag. You may want to look at, see if your triglycerides are elevated. What about blood pressure? Blood pressure is a sign that you're moving in the direction of metabolic syndrome. Central obesity or carrying a little bit of excess yellow fat or weight. It's an inflammatory tissue. It's got all kinds of inflammatory mediators that it signals and sends out to the cellular nucleus to say, hey, there's a war going on here. High blood sugar, low HDL. Low HDL can be just as much of a problem as high LDL can. So adding up all of your biomarkers to see if your system is chronically inflamed is a bonus to put out the fire before it leads to things like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, having a stroke, Alzheimer's disease, which is oftentimes considered to be type 3 diabetes which is hardening of the arteries that has occurred from chronic <coughs> inflammation in our arterial hoses going on every day, all the time, from lifestyle. And then at the end is cancer, which nobody wants to have cancer, but cancer is a type of chronic inflammation. We've been asked many times, what are some signs that I have chronic systemic inflammation? This is not a complete list. And I want everyone to look at that slide right now. Pay close attention. Look at that. How many of these things that we see that are very common in our society that we just chalk up to something we can deal with with some sort of pharmacological intervention? All of these are signs of chronic systemic inflammation. They all have a major part of that that has chronic systemic inflammation. Is it starting to make sense now? Are we starting to tie the loose ends together and understand that our systems are under attack? And it's critical to understand all these many things that we see right here in front of us can be overturned and or totally avoided by eliminating chronic systemic inflammation. So, you know, historically it was great, and it is even now a great thing to have a rapid inflammatory response if you have an acute issue or an acute illness, a broken bone, a cut, a scratch, a bruise. And this is necessary for survival. But it's possible that these acute inflammatory responses have resulted in maladaptive uh, responses in our modern environment, which is dominated by our sedentary habits, where sitting has become the new smoking, the abundance of high carbohydrate foods, and the reduced 
risk of mortality to common infections. This is one common approach today, and we're certainly not knocking it because it does have its place. Hold on. Wow. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. The idea of our pharmacological intervention that we have here is going to be something I want you to catch because what happens is medications are often prescribed for the problem, aren't they? They're given for the problem. Does this bring correction or a Band-Aid? Do we all agree Band-Aid? Do we all agree on the online audience that most of the time it's just a big Band-Aid for a gaping wound? We all agree with that? Now, is it necessary to have a Band-Aid for a gaping wound? Of course. If someone has a broken limb, I want the heaviest Band-Aid you have. That might be the heaviest drug you have to kill that pain off so it can begin to heal. But do I depend on that for wellness? The answer is no. We're not against unnecessary or necessary medication at all. But we do take a strong stand against unnecessary medication usage when a person is not given the opportunity, and I said opportunity, to understand the options for non-pharmacological ways to correct the underlying issues that led to the imbalanced response. See, one of the things that gets right up under my skin quickly is when people aren't given the opportunity to have a free choice in a free country. Shouldn't be that way. It's our choice to make. We can choose pharmacological intervention if we want to. We can choose to be sick if we want to. I don't like that, but that's really a wonderful thing called freedom. But it's not freedom when we're bound to think that pharmacological intervention is the only way. It's the only way. So this is a picture is just kind of an idea of how, remember nuclear kappa factor B, the nuclear hot button? Look at all of the things that that produces tumor necrosis factor, interleukins, IL-6. Well, we block that with rheumatologic drugs like etanercept, rituximab, uh, Humira, and other things that block the production of those interleukins. And if kappa B produces leukotrienes, and we block it with things like single air or acolyte, it produces things like um, cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase, and we're blocking those with NSAIDs, we're blocking those with a, just a general cortisone shot, and we're not looking to the root of what really caused it. When we stop those things, does that block the assault, or does that block the noise of the assault? It blocks the noise of the assault. Now, there's a different approach. Some would say it's functional medicine. Um, sometimes we like to call it functional healing or a healing path. And we find this approach to be quite different. This approach searches for more or less the underlying causes. Why is our body at war? What's it fighting against? And it brings correction and allows the body to return to this state of health and optimal wellness where it's really supposed to be. Remember when Dr. Michelle talked about all those signs and symptoms back from 130 AD, they realized that loss of function was a part of chronic systemic inflammation. How much loss of function are we having today in our world? This is not a new concept. It's an old concept. We just need to open our eyes and look backwards so we can begin to look forward. So points to remember is that inflammation is the body's natural, normal, physiological attempt to attend, uh, defend against a foreign invader or a pathogen. Injuries from trauma, infections, toxins, in even the standard American diet. So your body is trying to protect itself. But chronic diseases have been linked to this chronic systemic inflammation. So when chronic inflammation is there, it's like an injury that is going on in your body 24-7, 365 days of the year without a break. And the immune system begins to fail and it shows up with all of these signs and symptoms that we have that we talked about earlier. And we wanted to give you a few more points to remember. Remember, pharmacological intervention focuses on downstream consequences. Is that always bad? No. 
Is it always unnecessary? No, there are necessary things, but functional medicine or functional healing kind of works from the upstream, addressing the underlying causes that can bring about healing and stop the perpetuation of unnecessary levels of inflammation. Inflammation can be in turn dampened by lessening the triggers, knowing what they are, paying attention to what's coming at us and learning to modulate those things through lifestyle. Lifestyle is a big deal. How much percentage does it matter? 85% and we're talking just nutrition. So is everybody ready for the solution? Yes. Here we go. The things that cause inflammation. You might want to take a picture of this slide. You might want to memorize them, write them down, whatever you need Good to do. Good luck with memorizing them all. <laughs> but there are 20 ingredients on that slide that we really need to be aware of that are inflammogens. And they create that persistent organic pollutant load that is coming into your body every single day, 365 days of the year, unless you have decided to take action and get that out of there to turn those labels over and start going what evaluating what am i putting in my precious skin bag or temple every single day of the year perhaps there is a reason why i don't feel so well hydrogenated or fractionated oils we saw earlier that that triggers nf kappa b that's your nuclear hot button what about enriched wheat canola oils, soy oils, high fructose corn syrup, the number one cause of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or fatty liver disease in America, high fructose corn syrup, creating those age glycosylated end products, creating quicker, faster aging. The system just feels like it's rusting. Sucralose, soy lecithin, artificial colorings, monosodium glutamate, oh boy, the quickie, eaty, outy restaurants just need, we need to take a look at some of those things. Corn is not always your friend. The artificial sweeteners, aspartame, sucralose, uh, all the pink, the yellow, mm -hmm. the blue packets. <laughs> some of those break down into formaldehyde. And formaldehyde in the anatomy lab, what do we use formaldehyde for? We use it to pickle people. So it's I'm called <laughs> preparation for us is what it is. Yeah. So a little bit every single day, 365 days of the year, ends up in a liver that is chronically inflamed. For those of you that doubt there's population control going on, think again. You want to get a headache really quick, start trying to count those things. She said 20. Real quick, count them. They'll give you a headache. And one thing I'll say, high fructose corn syrup is found heavily in something called ketchup. So the next time you feed your grandkids ketchup and french fries and think it's cute, I want you to know that I wish you could be indicted for attempted murder. <laughs> we need to stay on the outside of our grocery store and learn to make shopping kind of fun and educational. This is no laughing matter. You go to the inside of those grocery stores, it's like a funnel sucking you down to hell, man. <laughs> you know, it'll pull you right in there. The end caps, like, buy it now. But it's all a bunch of garbage. In our grocery store, there's great peril. We need to stay away from the peril and gravitate towards those things that give us life. In all seriousness, we play with this too much. Our bodies are some precious, precious, amazing instruments of healing. If, everyone say if. If. If we decide to give them the materials to fight with. Or we try to be selfish and stingy and take it away. The consequences are dire. So what is the anti-inflammatory protocol? It is a nutrition-based program that is designed to optimize your health. There are some personalized supplements that kind of go along with it. Not everybody gets the same nutrients because everybody's genetic uh, makeup is, di is different. We utilize some homeopathic drops, and remember these drops do not have hormones in them, but they bring cravings under control through the balance of the HPA or hypothalamic pituitary axis, the brain pituitary adrenal axis, and through other mood modulating hormones that aid in the balance of addictive behavior. So we have the design of creating a sustainable plan for you to use and the supplements are not for everyone. 
Supplements be, can be greatly overused and they are a hype or overhyped many times. But we do need certain things. And the need is determined by you and your situation. Energy maintenance, of course, is critical. As you begin the program, you may as well have a continued fat loss and certain supplements may be necessary as this process is going on. Of course, we like to look at your biomarkers, your biomarkers of health, which indicate how much inflammation is in your system. Do you have those biomarkers of chronic inflammation or chronic disease? And some may dictate the nutrients that we actually utilize for you. And the last part is the DNA analysis. This absolutely streamlines what you need, and this is where your unique, uniqueness is truly optimized for you at like precision lifestyle medicine. And it's likely lessening the expense or the expenditure on excessive amounts of supplementation. We get asked a lot of time about what's in the drops, and basically everything in there is natural. Natural that's occurring in the environment from a natural basis. There is no HCG. Though we get accused of that sometimes, there is no HCG. Uh, there's also no lack of, uh, there should be no thought of a lack of safety or any sort of potential contraindications or aller allergenic sort of response. Zero. Sometimes because of a lack of understanding, even from practitioners, when we lack understanding, we go ahead and say it's not okay. Are you following me on that? If we don't understand something, it must not be okay. But there are things that all of us do not understand. And there are things that we'll never understand. But one thing we understand is nutrition. When you put it in in the right spot, in the right amounts, it absolutely works. The main thing about these drops that I see that actually work well is they do help facilitate the sort of speeding up of our detoxification process. And that's a good thing because if toxins are in your system, and please understand, if a person is able to make fat really well, most toxins are fat soluble. The toxins get stored there. So when we lose fat, the toxins come out. Well, what about those people that don't make fat and they seem to be slim and eat anything they want and the scale weight doesn't go up? Not so fast. They're actually worse off than the people that make fat because the toxins are not stored in fat. They're stored in their organs. Wow! Kind of gives you a whole new perspective in looking at the size of someone's clothes or this, the, the weight on the scale, doesn't it? They can become sicker faster. So reasons we really need to lessen yellow fat or inflammatory fat is number one, for every 10 pounds you're overweight, it's 10 on your joints. 20 pounds times 10 is 200. 30 pounds times 10 is 300. How are you gonna feel at the end of the day carrying an extra 300 pounds around? Fatigued and tired. You're gonna to go to the doctor and you're gonna say, hey, I'm fatigued and tired, and he's gonna give you an antidepressant. And you're gonna go home and take the antidepressant, and you're gonna come back to the doctor and say, well, the antidepressant really didn't work, I'm still fatigued and tired, and now I'm gaining weight. And then he's gonna give you a weight loss drug, and you're gonna go home, if fatigued and tired, gaining weight with the weight loss drug, and all of a sudden you're gonna get flushed in the face and feel tense, and he's gonna, you're gonna go back to the doctor and he's gonna give you a high blood pressure medicine for hypertension. Now you're on three medications, and we really haven't talked about the issue of getting rid of the root of the problem, which is lifestyle, and getting rid of yellow fat. Does anybody know what this is? Yellow fat. You know what I like to do with this yellow fat? <laughs> One of my highlights of the day. <laughs> Some people call excess fat dooleys, truck dooleys, isn't that? Muffin I don't tops. Know. What do they call? Yeah. <laughs> belly Dunlop. Belly Dunlop. One more Dunlop's time. Disease. One more time. Yeah. That was a good one. Ouch. <laughs> So, you know, that, that fat, it's, it's an inflammatory organ. It secretes those inflammatory cytokines that push your nuclear reactor button and keep your system in a chronic state of inflammation. So it's not normal, it's not healthy, it's a, it's a non-healthy biological response to have excess fatty tissue on your system. So who can benefit from the anti-inflammatory plan. 
really for everybody, but we decided to identify some people that just simply cannot. The first category is those that are unwilling, don't want to. It's not up to us to change anybody's mind. We just give information. We have to be very cautious with pregnant and nursing mothers. Obviously, we're speeding up the detox process. They don't need to do that in a rapid manner because they would pass on the toxins to the baby. What about people that have, um, are going through chemo or dialysis? The same symptoms would occur, so you've got to be careful with that. And people that have um, you know, severe mental illness like schizophrenia or severe emotional disorders because they're not handling life very well anyway. We need to be very closely in our supervision with those that are morbidly obese. We have a lot of people in here that, that do come in that are morbidly obese and they have lost 200 pounds, which is amazing. But you have to really watch that process because their body's really under attack. People that have been uh, diagnosed with type 2 diabetes for a long, long time, their body is struggling and it's struggled for a long time. Remember, it's been under war for a long time. Their soldiers are weak. But be very careful with people taking a lot of medications too. But for the most part, it can benefit everybody. So let's get into the plan specifics. We've talked about the drops. The first three days before, two to a couple days before you start the plan, you're going to initiate the drops while you do what they call fat loading days. These fat loading days are not about gluttony. We're actually just taking in extra good fat, like avocados, eggs, olives, oils, nuts, etc. So that is considered the, <laughs> the glutton days, is adding extra fat. You're welcome. Just so you know, online, the people in here in the audience were saying, thank you, yeah, right, during that. Yeah. So when we fat load on these first few days and add the drops, which you'll add the drops a half a milliliter three times a day, and you're going to want to avoid eating for, or drinking 15 minutes on either side of the drops. Okay? And it comes, we'll talk about the book in a minute, but it comes with a book with the exact specific directions for you to follow to begin to initiate the drops. And you'll begin the drops on day one. So it starts giving the drops the ability to get your cravings suppressed, get your system moving, start getting access to that yellow fat, and turn that system down off that vicious cookie cycle, getting you away from eating all that sugar. So this is about steering your body to recognize your own body fat is fuel. When we change energy sources and get off sugar, people, people think they're gonna starve to death. But when we've got inflammation and excess yellow fat around, that's a lot of calories to burn. There's plenty of energy for us to live off and feel great when we shift the metabolism into a fat burning system and begin to store up or to get rid of that excess stored up yellow fat. So the book, what about the book? The anti-inflammatory food protocol, the specific amounts are in the book. Uh, and it's gonna tell you exactly what you need to eat. And it's all on a very specific page in the book. So when we start the anti-inflammatory food protocol, we stop all the gluttonous types of food, right? Where we talked about those 20 things on the label, there's gonna be a lot more things that kind of shed out of your life. And when you see that food list, you're gonna go, well, isn't this on the list? Well, isn't that on the list? Well, isn't this on the list? If it's not on the list, don't eat it. It's considered inflammatory for certain reasons. And if you have questions about that, just ask your practitioner, or ask one of us, and we'll tell you why it's not there. It doesn't always mean that it's not gonna be there forever, but in the, uh, in the short term, we wanna make sure that we take that inflammatory load off the system so that your body can heal. So are you ready for kind of uh, a list of the inflammatory foods? Yes? Okay, so here they are. I am. Uh, sugars, artificial sweeteners. We understand that. Fried foods, we get that one. Processed foods, sodas, we get that as well. Excess caffeine and excess alcohol, the word being excess is key. Excess can be determined by, determined by multiple factors, including genetics. Breads and grains. I always look around and see people's eyes get big on that one. Breads and grains are inflammatory in their preparation methods today. If you want a good video on that, go to YouTube, look up FMI TV. There's a video there called Are Grains Good For You? And it's a video that was produced uh, by our team. Yeast, soy, and corn, genetic modification, all of these foods that I just listed for you are inflammatory all the time 
for everyone, young and old, skinny or not. All the time, young and old, everyone, skinny or not, inflammatory all the time. If you eat these food, do so at your own risk. So beginning a process, where do we begin? There's two options. One is fast track. The fast track is for people who have a significant amount of fat to lose and want to get to their destination relatively quickly. If you're in a state of readiness and you want to get there and you're ready to get there and you're ready to initiate, this phase is right for you. Or if you're one that wants to kind of go slow and you have 10 pounds or less to lose, you might want to hop on sure and steady. There's no rush. Either way, it's good. Listen to your system. Listen to your goals, your motivation. Your biomarker improvement will be seen in both. So beginning the process can last indefinitely depending mm -hmm. upon your goal and, be, and depending upon your biomarkers how inflamed your system is and where our destination is going. So food additions over time and at the right time, would we ever want to put inflammatory foods back in our system? People miss grains, they miss breads, they miss these things that create inflammation. So is there a time that we put some of those things back? Some foods can be added back over time. All fruits and proteins uh, like cheese and dairy, those go back into the system with extreme caution. They're inflammatory. Some nuts and seeds can be allowed in moderation, just depending upon what your body is doing with metabolism. Quality fats are added in, in moderation when your system is burned off as excess yellow fat, then we start adding those things back in. Timing is based on body composition, where we are with your goals and your body composition and your biomarker optimization. So present body fat as well as inches lost tell us where we're going and when we need to move to the next phase. By all means, pay attention. Listen to the body. Listen to all these signs and symptoms we've given you tonight. They tell you a story. What is your body doing? Is it at war? The body's either saying, this is great, I like it, or it's saying, get this poison out of here right now. And really understand as you start to reintroduce foods or introduce any foods, Look for the signs such as fatigue, congestion, bloating, headaches, joint pain, etc. The body's trying to talk to you. So critically important to learn to listen. Make sense? So when you get to your goal, it's time for maintenance, arriving at maintenance. This opens the door to slowly add those foods back in in a moderate to low glycemic index. We're going to put them in very slowly. This is a slow step and urges close attention to how you feel consuming these foods. You got to listen. Only you know your body. You know if broccoli gives you gas and makes you bloat. Sometimes things that may seem good to, for others are not necessarily good for you. We want to make sure that we're not reverting back to old habits and letting symptoms fall on deaf ears. This will derail you. This is not about adding back poison, even in moderation. As Dr. Mark and I always say, we don't cheat on our finances, we don't cheat on our taxes, we don't cheat on our marriage. Why would we cheat on our health? A cheat date is it, day is it ever in vogue? Why would we eat cupcakes, cookies, and donuts if that's what got us into the, the, the inflammatory situation in the first time? Remember, every time we eat an inflammatory food, T damage may take place up to 120 days. That's the life of a red blood cell. You put those nutrients that you're intaking from the standard American diet, it's becoming a part of your cellular anatomy. And it takes time for your body to replace it. So just because you ate it today doesn't mean you'll remember it tomorrow, but your body does. So ideally, we want to make permanent change in your life and the life of those around you. Ideally, maintenance consists of anti-inflammatory eating and a sustained lifestyle change. So this means for life, and this phase is about transformation. So we have seen it hundreds of times in hundreds of people, and people become walking billboards of health. When we're talking about the goals of our maintenance plan, we're talking about long-term success for all of our lives. This, this is what it means you permanently change your lifestyle end up reducing medication oftentimes we decrease the toxic loads uh, the body gets better it's it's really a transformation of the heart body and the mind all of it and when we go back you know the maintenance drops is 0.5 mil twice if people wonder it's 0.5 mil twice not three times anymore 
So stalling, sometimes we're on a plan and you know, people think weight loss has got to happen. We're not obsessed with weight loss. We really don't care about weight loss. Weight loss is a side effect of wellness. But if weight loss stalls, stalling is considered four to five consecutive days of no weight loss or maybe even weight gain. Your body is reacting to something that you're putting in. So when we have a stall, we often recommend that you will utilize what's called a protein day. And you'll use 12 to 16 ounces of high quality protein in small portions throughout the day, and maybe one piece of fruit. This will break a stall 90% of the time. In some instances, we may actually mix in a, a dominant fat or a, have a ketogenic day and always, always, always drink a lot of water. And there's things we want us to do as far as documentation goes because we understand that writing something down improves your success rate. Uh, it's been said that if you didn't write it down, it didn't happen. Anybody heard that s saying before? So we write down foods consumed, we write down our scale weight because even though it's not about scale weight being successful or not, it does tell a bit of the story. And if you didn't document something, you didn't see it. So sometimes we do things that we didn't write down, so if we didn't see it, we forget about it. If we forget about it, we pretend it didn't happen. And then we don't believe it. You see the progression there. So documentation is super, super important. So practitioner monitoring assures your success. It's a team. We work with you together to create that accountability, to create community, to create health. And without proper monitoring, success would be minimal and would not be long lasting. These factors, these four factors that we're going to give you are the ut of utmost importance in achieving your success. Those are four week checkup appointments. There's four of them, four appointments and an in-body. That in-body is the body composition analysis that looks at your body composition and it tells us how much fat mass you have on your frame, how much lean mass, what your basal metabolic rate is, what your intracellular and extracellular health looks like, your, your water, where you're storing your water. That gives us an idea if you're starving off your lean mass as you're going through this process or are you getting rid of the right kind of stuff. Remember, it's not about scale weight, it's about body composition. The next component is bi-monthly UAs. We check your urine twice a month. And the reason for that is the urine, believe it or not, urine tells us a lot about you, whether you're burning off your muscle, if there's protein in your urine. We've got to take a look at how many calories you're taking in and whether you're getting enough protein. If there's sugar in your urine, have you clicked over to being a diabetic? What about ketones? Is your body burning fat as fuel? Is it going down the, the pathway that we want it to? So those urines are very important for us to guide you even from a hydration status. We check in email by email on a weekly basis to make sure that you don't have any questions. You can email really any time if you've got a question, a care or concern. And this occurs until a person nears the maintenance phase. People ask what it costs. There it is. Full disclosure, that's what it costs. Uh, tonight is the equivalent of having an orientation appointment. I'm going to repeat that again. Tonight, from watching online and listening here and being in our presence, is the equivalent of having the orientation appointment. It does not mean that the next visit's free. I mean, seriously, we've been asked that. Um, afterwards, we want to see people at least once a month for three to six months, depending on things. And that could be on the phone or in person. The UAs, you see the cost of the drops, et cetera. And we do provide emails. I don't know about you, but that is a massively unusual thing for a practitioner's office to provide instant access to the practitioners without cost. We do that because we want to provide you feedback and give you empowerment. We don't want you to keep coming down here year after year with the same issues. We want you to learn it and go out there and live it. That's the truth. We care about weight loss a little bit, but I care more about your health care more about your health. Caution, your uniqueness comes forth with attention and personalization. Remember, nobody knows you like you know you. You live with you 365 days of the year. Many times there are deviations from the plan as systems show themselves and they, they reveal themselves to us. And certain things you just can't tolerate, like broccoli may be good for you, but if broccoli gives you gas, it might be something that we need to modulate or Please moderate. Please don't eat it. 
So strict practitioner um, uh, guidelines and compliance are required to really um, have success, and they're required to purchase the drops and the book. So the plan will not work or be endorsed without the use of the drops, oftentimes because they curb cravings, get access to yellow fat, add some nutrients in there that improve the process of success, and without compliance, remember, <coughs> compliance to the guidelines really give you success. If the foods are inflammatory, don't eat them. All right, so tonight, this is for the online audience, and I'll talk to you, you folks here. Uh, for the online audience, you can go to fmidr forward slash shape kit and order your drops and books. We're going to contact you tomorrow. Someone from our office will and give you some further instructions with that. And with that said, I know we've got people that I didn't say hi to earlier from out of the country and all around the parts of this, of this country. Uh, there's a couple hundred out there online. So we want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. And uh, with that said, everybody say thank you. Thank you. So we're glad you guys joined us. We'll see you guys later. Remember, fmir.com forward slash shape kit, and we'll see you guys later.